Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me once again. Today we have something slightly unusual in that we have a kit from Hobby Boss. Nothing unusual in that perhaps. Um, this kit's been donated actually by one of my subscribers so I'm very grateful to Neil. Thank you very much indeed. He wanted to see this reviewed. Your wish is my command, sir. So, thanks a lot. And also, um, by the way, if anybody else wants to send a kit along, just contact me, drop me a message. Um, I, I sort of don't, I'm not looking to do requests, but I will do if people have got something interesting that we haven't covered before and they'd like to see me sort of tackle it and give a, a fair assessment of what's in the box. Um, in this case, um, Neil has actually insisted I don't return it to him, which is, which is very generous, I've got to say. Um, but I'm very happy to return it to him, and if anybody else wants to do the same, I'm quite happy to send it back to you as long as you cover the cost of postage. No problem at all. Anyway, let's have a look at this kit that he's keen to see then. So, um, this is the N-AW, which actually stands for Night Stroke All Weather variant of the A10 Thunderbolt 2, or Warthog as it's more popularly known. Now, of course, this aircraft was um, first flown in 1972, would you believe, which is remarkable, actually. Um, and it came in in the sort of 19, late 70s, early 80s as a tank buster for the US Air Force. Uh, and it was originally conceived, of course, to knock out Soviet tanks on a potential sort of conflict with the Soviet Union, which never happened, of course, thankfully. Now, it did, of course, see extensive service in the Gulf War in 1991, and then again um, in the uh, a couple of years later, we had the Bosnia War in Yugoslavia, it was used extensively, and also Kosovo War in 1999, I think it was, uh, and again the Second Gulf War 2003. So it's seen quite a bit of service and been incredibly successful. It's an interesting aircraft. Um, First of all, obviously, because it's a tank buster, they made it highly armoured. I mean, this thing, it's not the fastest plane in the world. It's, uh, I think its top speed's about 440 miles per hour, thereabouts. Um, so it's only marginally faster than something like a World War II Mosquito, you know. But it doesn't need to be fast. It's not a jet fighter. It just needs to come in low, be highly manoeuvrable, and loiter around a battlefield above the battlefield, which it can do. It's got an 800 mile range, so it's got, you know, really good performance. Um, and it's got this incredible GAU-8 cannon, uh, electric cannon on the front, which of course is what makes this aircraft quite famous, because it has this brrrt sound that it makes when it fires, um, and it fires at an astonishing rate. It fires 65 shells per second, which is just hard to take in, isn't it? It's mind-numbing, I've got to say. It's just 3,900 rounds per minute. And it fires either high explosive shells or uh, uranium, depleted uranium tipped shells um, for greater armour piercing. So quite a nasty weapon to put it mildly and goes through a lot of, uh, lot of ammunition. Um, the thing that pilots like about this aircraft, it may not be fast, but um, it's very heavily armoured and it's, it's really, it's, its enemies are on the ground because it, it would only fly into an area where there's air cover uh, and then dispatch ground targets, so vehicles, outposts, communication centres or even individuals and tanks on the ground. Um, so consequently a lot, a lot of its main enemies are going to be ground fire and consequently they designed it to have very high levels of armour plating. The engines, as you can see, they're extremely armoured in these huge great nacelles, which are titanium armoured. Um, and a, a lot of the um, the pilot, and in this case the co-pilot, co sort of weapons officer, Wizzo, they're in a titanium tub, which is uh, to stop shell fire again, protect them from the ground. Um, and it's just like a flying tank, which is what people call it sometimes, you know, it's an amazing, amazing weapon. Um, now this version is a, is a little bit of a story behind this because this was never actually taken on by the US Air Force and there is only one in existence which is currently at the US Edwards Air Force Base in California. Um, reason being that the, the idea was going to be, the initial orders were placed, I think they had a, a couple of hundred into the US Air Force around about 1980, uh, thereabouts. And then um, Fairchild, who were the designers, came forward with this two-seater version. And the idea being, not, not as a trainer initially, the idea was going to be that you're going to have this wizard, a weapons officer, who would operate countermeasures. Uh, and it was kind of a, like a wild weasel electronic countermeasures, um, you know, going into a battle zone and trying to mess with the enemy's radar and communications and 
and um, basically they're anti-aircraft systems. Now the US Air Force didn't show any interest in this at all, mainly because I think they already had that f capability with the the Wild Weasel Phantoms and the um, the F-111s, which had a similar function in one of their variants, of course. So it never got taken up. There were no, no order was placed. Then um, the actual uh, manufacturing of this became Northrop Grumman. They took it over, um, and they were pitching for the idea of maybe have it as a trainer, because they'd already produced this um, prototype, which is the one we have here. Uh, they decided they were going to have it as a training aircraft, whereby you probably have the pilot in the back seat, I'm pretty sure that's true, and then you'd have the training, um, the student uh, who's under instruction in the front, and this, this avoids the needs for simulators, which is perhaps not as reliable. Um, and they actually placed an order. The US Air Force said, yes, we'll have some of those, and they placed an order. I'm not quite sure how many it was for. I think it was like, I don't know, about 48 or something. Uh, and Congress con cancelled it. Um, I'm talking of Congress, we should mention a bit of an interesting story here. I've always felt that Congress have had um, historically had a beef about this aircraft. Um, it was quite an expensive program, I'm sure, but you may recall, some of you may have seen on YouTube, that there was a famous incident with Senator John McCain, the Republican senator, who's now died, of course, sadly, who, of course, was a hero from the Vietnam War, who was actually captured by the Viet Cong and flew Skyhawks off the USS Forrestal. And he was very lucky not to get killed in that horrible fire on the forest till he was very close to the explosion at the start. Got away by the skin of his teeth. But in, I think it's about 2013, 2014, he, he attended a, a Senate Congress hearing um, whereby, I think it was the Barack Obama administration, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure that they were having this hearing about scrapping the A-10 and he was advocating that they needed to have a replacement. You couldn't simply scrap it. It needed to either be upgraded or replaced with an aircraft of similar or better capability. And they weren't going to do that. They were just going to scrap it, save money. And there's this video where he really, there's this lady who is, uh, on behalf of the government, is advocating that, that, that it's not needed anymore. And he just rips her to pieces and says, of course it's needed. Our boys on the ground and our allies, like the British and others, they rely on this aircraft to give them close air support and they call it in at short notice to attack ground targets uh, and take out the bad guys even in quite small numbers. A very high precision strike uh, aircraft this, you know. I mean it can carry bombs, it can carry um, you know, laser guided uh, bombs and weapons but really it's there to, to pop up, take out smallish targets uh, with great accuracy with a minimum of collateral damage and it fulfilled this role so beautifully and so uh, so well it was the true successor of the Thunderbolt which is why they called it that you know and it, it, it literally did what it said on the tin uh, flying around with this enormous cannon you know brrrt, shooting away making this horrendous noise um, and of course cheered on by the uh, American and, and Allied forces and of course it served in the end both the uh, Iraq wars um, and Afghanistan. It was extensively used in Afghanistan and it was at the end of that campaign or toward the end of it before um, the passing of Senator McCain uh, that he was making this very passionate defence and saying you have got to replace this. Our forces need a weapon system like this uh, and so far they don't seem to have come up with any alternative. But anyway, we're digressing. Let's have a look at this kit that Neil has sent us. Uh, so thanks from the channel to Neil, I uh, really appreciate it. Um, we've got some chit chat on the side, which is kind of the stuff I've already told you. I'm not going to read it again because I've kind of just told you what it says here pretty much. Um, they made 715 aircraft though, that's quite interesting, it's quite a lot isn't it? Um, and it says basically that below a thousand feet, it was in its element, you know, very low level, uh, like a, you know, more high speed than a helicopter and gets in, gets out, and even though it's travelling at, you know, 440 miles an hour or thereabouts, it's more than adequate, more than adequate at that level, at very low altitude, you know, it it's, zooms in, it's over your head and it's gone. So let's have a look at what Hobby Boss have produced. Just a warning though, just say here, copyright 2018, and this, this is giving me deja vu, because this is very similar to what happened with the Trumpeter Bear, where they said, I think, 2018, and it turned out to be a kit from 2003. This actual kit came out, first of all, 2007, so it ain't new. Um, I, I'm not familiar with it though, so I literally have no knowledge or information about what's inside, so I'm just going to take it as I find it and give my honest appraisal, as always. Let's have a look. Right, so, um, 
it's kind of odd that they, they went for this two-seater. I quite like it though, it looks quite... Everybody says about how it's uh, the aerodynamics and the shape of it is much nicer than the standard one. But we shall have a look and see what we can see. So, we've got decals in the little bag, we've got a couple of out sheet and instructions. Then we've got, oh, we've got a box, box here, box of goodies. Put that to one side. And then we've got one, two, three... I like the way they've done this in separate bags, that's a good start. Four, five bags of sprues. So nicely protected, all separate, which is fantastic. So let's get cracking. So what I'll do, I'll just, um, the same as getting ever crowded. I'll try and do a better job today than I did when I was doing the, the B2 Spirit, Christmas Spirit Stealth Bomber. I do apologise to those of you that watched that vid. I, I got... I'd forgotten that I'd zoomed in quite close and I was there, then sort of opening bags over here and you were just getting green screen so I'm very sorry. I'm going to try and pay more attention to that and give you a slightly less zoomed in. I think it's not working too well that. Perhaps getting in a bit too close so let's see if I can improve today. So we've got, it's kind of a leaflet, it's almost like a, it reminds me a little bit of a matchbox uh, from the 70s this. Uh, it's an instruction book that's in leaflet form and it's basically got basic information about what, what kind of things you might need, you'll need to make a hole, you'll need to cut and remove things, you need some weight for the nose obviously, and then and then it opens, okay, it is like a matchbox, I wasn't far wrong, was I? let's just go back, yeah, it's like a matchbox, uh, one of the bigger kits where they open up, same as this, oh right, okay, it's a little bit different to what I'm used to, let's have a look at this, so starting with the cockpits, Stage one. So you are building, obviously you've got this, this twin seater, so you're building up um, the front cockpit first and then you've got, then you've got, obviously that is going to be the rear seat. The seat belts and things are all moulded in, which is fine, if it's done well that shouldn't be a problem. So you're, you're creating that, putting it on its injection rails on the back, then inserting it into this tub, the titanium tub, outer tub. Then you're doing the same, you've got the console and the stick going in, and then you're doing the same with the rear seats. Um, but then it doesn't seem to show how they go together. Does it show it later? I don't think it does, actually. No, it doesn't show it later. It shows it later over here, but it shows it all like glued together. But it doesn't really explain. Am I missing something? don't think that's explaining very well how those two go together, actually. That's quite curious. Anyway, you might want to refer to others that have perhaps done a video build on this one because it looks a little bit tricky as to... It's not clear how the finished part should look. You know you get this thing with Airfix where they show the next step and it shows the previous step and they put it in red, which I'm not a fan of actually, but at least it does make it clear. That's not so clear. Um, it just sort of skips on to the cannon. So we've got the GAU-8 cannon, which is this uh, huge Gatling gun, of course. Multi-barrel Gatling gun, which has... Is it eight barrels? Let's see, six barrels, I think. Uh, and you can see here that it's got this um, great big muzzle, which looks very, uh, very impressive. This is the ammunition uh, system, a motor system, which uh, you've also got all the ammunition belts here coming out, so you can see how it goes in, feeds into the actual cannon itself. Uh, so you're building that up, and then you start creating your main tyre. I think they mean that that's the front nose leg. Some strange language being used here by the Chinese. Then you're going on to building up your wings, uh, complete with the flaps and slats, so that's quite nice. Quite, quite like the look of that. And because it's a very highly manoeuvrable aircraft. Then you do, get, flip it over to the underneath and insert those, plus your pylons and your... That looks like I was wrong, that was the main wheel. Okay. So it's the main legs, uh, goes into the nacelle under the wing, over here. And then you move on to the, do the exact same thing on the opposite wing, creating your main wheel tyre, complete with your gear bay doors, and put them in as well, and uh, they get glued in with the pylons onto the wing. Then it shows you this completed, rather mysteriously completed tub, which it hasn't really shown clearly how it gets put together, but anyway, and your big Gatling cannon, which sits right on top of it. I mean, it's just, it's huge, isn't it? It's like a flying cannon, really. This is why they called it the flying tank. <laughs> um, that all gets put together and then you put the two cockpit halves in, uh, sandwiching it all together. 
Then you've got the assembly. It's this thing, I can't remember which, which kit I reviewed recently where they did the same thing, where they sort of showed you assembling um, big parts together and then the parts that you actually insert in the assembly, it shows after. And they're doing it here, aren't they? Was that Hobby Boss? I've got a thing. Might have, perhaps it's a little quirk of theirs. It shows you, first of all, it starts off at the top showing this going in. But you haven't built it until you get to here. Which is kind of odd. A um, little bit confusing. A little bit confusing. The, the drawings look good. I can, I can see what they're trying to say. It's just the order they're putting it in. It's a bit of uh, slightly off-putting. Then on this side we've got your uh, elevators and uh, horizontal stabilizers going in. Uh, and your vertical tails, uh, vertical stabilizers with rudders, of course, on either side. Then you come to build up, the, and again they're doing it here, but it's very vague about the actual, you know, do you do that first or that first? Of course, you have to do this first because you've got to build up the engines. But it's a little bit odd the way they've just sequenced these pictures. There should be an arrow, shouldn't there? Like a, you know, step two, step three, but anyway. So you're building up your huge, um, and I think the Pratt & Whitney are they? Or some, some, I can't remember the, um, the engine manufacturer. Um, it might be General Electric, I've got a feeling it might be General Electric engines. And then they've got the huge armour plating system around them of course, which is why they look so chunky. Uh, and then basically you're attaching that, um, well you'll do that in a second, but you're attaching the wings and the tails going on. Then you've got the front of the cockpit. Um, with the coving and uh, putting your engines in here and uh, ultimately your canopy and they've even got some chocks for the wheels which is quite good, quite like that something a little bit different uh, and then last but not least all your many many weapons so doesn't say what they are, oh yes it does, Mark 82 bomb, Mark 20 bomb and then we've got, uh, is it a paveway? a maverick? paveway I think it is Paveway guided on AGM 65. I think that's Paveway, isn't it? Uh, and then you've got a free for GBU 8. Um, and you've got this whole cluster of these uh, Mark 82s. You can have them on a pylon. And there's one, two, three, four of them. Six, sorry, six per pylon. So quite a lot of weapons are included. That's good. Um, and then you've got the Paveways. Uh, they're optional, apparently. Uh, and then you have also got. GBU 10s, slightly bigger, and I think it depends on which theatre and, and which time that these were these were used at. And then finally over here you've got your, your loadout showing how it all goes, the various options and how they fit together appropriately. And then oddly at the end it shows the sprue trees, which is again very strange sequencing. Um, I think the diagrams are very good, um, but I do find that uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, it's like Matchbox gone wrong <laughs> in the way that they've sequenced these uh, these steps. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit confusing. You need to have a good read of it and don't charge in uh, and understand what is obviously the correct procedure. Um, because certainly a, a newcomer might find that a little bit off-putting. Anyway, let's have a look what we've got here. We've got a lovely paint guide, which looks very nice. It's a look, good looking plane with this two seater uh, element of it. I'm not sure why they chose to model it because it's such a rare thing, but of course it's something different, so will look quite good, I think. Let's have a little closer look here. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite graceful looking, isn't it? It's a bit more swoopy, not quite as brutish. Slightly more feminine looking aircraft than the, uh, the flying tank of the standard A10. Um, it's got all your uh, call outs here for the various uh, stencils and decals, decals. And then you've also got quite a quite a good, well printed this, I've got to say. Um, when we were looking at that, um, what was the one the other week where it was really dark? I'm trying to think what the aircraft was. Oh, the, the, the Cobra helicopter from ICM, which is a great kit. But they printed it really, really dark and it was almost like black on white. It was hard to see what, what the colours or the markings were supposed to be. This is a lot clearer. You can certainly see uh, a little bit more definition uh, and clarity about your decals. Uh, here's you've got your various bombs, you've got your uh, GBUs and your fuel tanks. Great, great weapons included. Very impressed with that, I've got to say. And then you've got your colour call-outs, which are all uh, from Gunsanyo. Mm, not very helpful, but uh, I wish these manufacturers would show a wider range than just than just the one 
single manufacturer that they're in league with because at the end of the day it was meaningless to a lot of models if they're using something else. Right, now we're going to have a proper look at this kit. We're going to open up the bags and everything. So we're going to get really close. But I mustn't leave you looking at that green table anymore. It's very bad of me. I've uh, learned my lesson. Let's get started with this one. So we've got decals and stencils. Let's see. Let's see first if I can get it open. Which I didn't do a good job of. I'm thinking my blade might be getting a little bit blunt. I like to do it in a way that it doesn't wreck back if I can. There we go. Right then. Oh, now this, here's a thing that Hobby Boss do, which I do like. They have tape to hold the backing paper. Oh, sorry, not the backing paper, but the protective tissue. Uh, to hold it on so it doesn't float off and it remains in contact. So all we have to do is come along with our blade here. Just take off one end only. And then we can uh, show you. There we go. Now, oh, 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 this is looking great. I like the look of this straight away. What do you think? He says. A, <laughs> the tissue flops back over it. Let's try that again. Let's just fold it back. There we go. Well then, we've got some really nice decals here. Look at these. I like the look of that. That's your instrument paddles, obviously, for your front and your rear. Um, and I am believing. What am I thinking here? I'm thinking this is the front, I think, and that's the rear. Um, but we shall see. You've got a refueling. This is the area that's the refueling port, which must be on the top somewhere, I think. Oh, it's on the nose, isn't it, on this aircraft? So it has a refueling probe into the nose. Well, not a probe, it's a, a point, I should say. You've got your low vis American. Uh, Lovis markings. You've got some interesting looking owl. It looks like the owl from uh, is that Jason the Argonauts or Clash of the Titans? It looks like a Ray Harryhausen owl to me. If you know the if you know the film I'm talking about, you will that comment will make a lot more sense. They look really nice. I've got to say, so that's Hobby Boss's own decals. We'll look at it. Let's have a look on the other side where we've got all these stencils and things. offering us here. Yes we have got a lot and this is for all the weapons, stencils for all the weapons in fact. Look at this lot, that's quite a selection. ALQ131, ALQ119, the AGM65, nicely printed, very bright, they look very sharp. Can't fault them at all, they look really nice. Yeah, it's cool, nice decal. Looks great. I think that just having that, um, the fact that the paper can't disappear is a really good thing. I don't know why others don't do that, to be honest. Right, let's put those away. Well, they, they look like a 10 out of 10 decals, no problems with that at all. So, I'm doing it again, aren't I? I've started doing it already. Problem is, when you're doing these reviews, is you're trying to think what you're going to say. You're trying to think in your mind, make sure it's correct what I'm going to say. At the same time as looking at things, thinking what's coming next and being aware of what's on the screen, which is, uh, and uh, the screen here is quite a long way away, not very big, so it's quite hard to spot sometimes, so that's have to forgive me. Right, we have a lovely box here with goodies in it, and what have we got? Oh, we've got the cockpit parts for the look of it, we've got some tyres, rubber tyres, clear parts, and the big clear parts of the canopy. So, let us have a real close look at these properly. Let's start off with the clear cockpit parts and we will just unzip that. He says. There we go. Now then, I've had a few clear parts in the last few reviews that have not been that special. The, the B2 Spirit was nice, but one or two others have been a bit disappointing lately, so let's see what we have here. I am very pleased to report that these look absolutely super. Uh, look at this. Give my zoom, it's a bit sluggish at the moment. I think it might need some new batteries. Right, so here's the windscreen, and that is really nice clear glass. That's just not distorted. A little bit of a mark on there, I just want polishing out. Is that distorted or is that a scratch? There's something there, can you see that? Just at the front here. A slight mark, I think it's on the surface. But there's no crazing like we had in that um, 
Torah 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 zeros from Edward, which had this rather nasty crazed appearance in the side windows. That's really clear and it's not distorty. It's nice. Here's the back section. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Looks superb. Just a slight mark on that from in the on the top or underneath. Can't quite tell. <coughs> it might actually be a slight flaw in the plastic itself. So there is a little flaw, a tiny, tiny flaw, just on this side here. Can't see which side it's on. Though. It's hard to see. But overall. Very sharp, very bright, crisp, it looks very consistently on the thickness. Very nice bit of clear clear parts, I'd say those are. That's quite a good start, I've got to say. Especially when you consider that this is not, not a brand new tooling, it's you know, 2007, so it's like 14 years old. So they're doing pretty well so far, Let's put that on one side. Then we have got cockpit tub parts. Which they put in a second bag for whatever reason. I'm not sure why they did that. Um, oh, okay. So here we have got our seats. And I have to be honest with you, first glance, I think those are superb. Considering they're not resin, they look very close. Some real detail here. Really nice figuring. You know, you've got your seat belt straps in there. Absolutely brilliant. What is not to like? And we've got two, are they the same? Two sections? And those sprues look identical to me, which I think is odd, because I don't see a huge difference between the front and the rear tub. I'm still not sure how these are supposed to go together. It wasn't clear in those instructions. I didn't like that. That, that looks like a, a replicated twin sprue to me. I can't see any difference at all. Perhaps you can, I don't know. Can you? No, I can't see any difference. The seats look identical. They're very nice though. Really good detail there. Perhaps the, um, the switch gear at the side is a little bit, maybe a bit basic in the way that it's been moulded. <coughs> Excuse me. But looks very good. No complaints, no flash, no nonsense. And you have to remember that um, on this one it does appear that uh, at least they've remembered to actually include two seats. They have got two crew members in this, which is better than ethics did with the mosquito. <laughs> well, they included the seats, but they didn't include the man, did they? Uh, I don't know what that was all about. I still don't understand the logic or the argument behind it, saying they had tolerance problems and blah blah. And what they should have done is just got around that problem by having him lying down in the Bombay room, but anyway, digressing. I don't think it was that hard to solve the problem. But let's have a look here, we've got some rubber parts it looks like here. Uh, rubber tyres. Oh yes. And some, looks like string. What's all that about then? Interesting. You might have a bit of a problem seeing these with my black gloves on today. Here we go, so this is the rubber tyres. They have a, a slight tread to them. I don't know if you can see that. Faint tread effect. Those are nice actually. There's no there's no seam mark on them, moulding seam at all. Those are actually nice rubber tyres. Now for a lot of people rubber tyres are not their thing because they like to have the weight on wheels effect, but I'm not sure with this aircraft whether you see that that much. I'd be very tempted to use these that are in the kit, to be honest. They look so nice, especially as you haven't got any seam to get rid of. Here's the nose wheel tyre. That's really good. Can't see a problem with that at all. And then you've strangely got this little bit of um, cotton, it looks like to me. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the purpose of that is. Seems a little bit odd, doesn't it? Hmm, okay. And I'll pop that away safely. I quite like that rubber, it's uh, one of the nicest rubber tyres I've seen on a model aircraft actually. Quite impressed. So those are okay. And then last but not least we've got, well I think I won't bother opening these at this stage because it's just little little tiny windows and it's mainly I think for the things like the Maverick um, 
sorry, Paveway Maverick type bombs. Um, I think that's just the noses of those, it's the camera. Uh, and they look quite nice, so we'll leave that there and we'll move on. So, let's just, let's do it again, I'll tell, sorry. Zoom me back out. So that's our little box of tricks here, of uh, goodies. Um, so we'll move that, we use some very heavy glue there, haven't we? We've got a problem with their boxes, because that one's, this end it's coming up, oh yes, and it has, it's just come unglued. I'll get some tape on that, no worries. <coughs> now then, let's have a look at the proper plastic, starting with this big baby. <coughs> let's have a go. It's a shame that they don't, um, it's a bit of a shame that they don't have these in like resealable bags like a lot of the Chinese manufacturers are doing now. Then the polyboss have changed the way they do that. Do it. Right then, big screws, there we go. And bear in mind it's a 14 year old tooling, Let's see what we got. Mm, okay, well you wouldn't know, it looks really quite modern, it's quite nice. Um, there's a little bit of flash on the sprue itself, but I don't see any on the parts. So check this out. First of all, we've got our engine intakes. And here they are. Now these are quite interesting because, if you look a bit more closely, you'll see that they're actually... Um, they're actually slightly hollowed out. Or are they? One is and the other one isn't. Hey, that's interesting. Can you see how... If I can do this by showing this behind. Can you see? You'll see the blue appearing in the background behind the engine. So it's actually very nicely done, this particular one. If you look carefully, see that they're kind of hollow. But on this one, the tolerances have gone a bit wrong, I think, and they're actually filled in a little. They look solid. So one's solid and one isn't. That's a little bit of a shame because that hollow effect is really good. And you can actually see through the blades. Uh, and I think it is, it's just a tolerance issue. That one's gone a bit wrong and the, the plastic's filled in on the mould because it's so fine. For whatever reason, on this one, it hasn't, and you can actually see through it, through the blades. There's a gap through the blades. I'll show you again on this side. You see? You see the knife moving back and forth behind it. How odd that they didn't get it the same on both parts. Anyway, <coughs> we shall move on. I might have to give them a little point off or half a point off for that, I'm afraid. Um, then you've got these uh, huge armour-plated covers that go around the jet engines uh, on these uh, nacelles at the back. And here is the, the huge moulding of that, that nacelle. And it's very nice. There's some lovely, very fine riveting, recess rivets. Very finely done. Nice panel lines on that. And there is on the nacelle part of it as well, actually. If you look at this, you can see there's some very nice uh, figuring there. Very, very delicately done. It's very nice. It's a shame they've had that problem with that engine. I'm sure that you can get your blade through there to open them up, but it's just a, it's just a bit of a challenge and a bit of a job to do. Here we've got the actual engines themselves. This is the actual real size of the engine, which is much smaller, and it's like a, it's like a teardrop shape, isn't it? Here you've got your Gatling gun barrels, which look really mighty, which it certainly is, of course. And then you've got the, the the main sort of cylindrical canister of the Gatling gun itself there. And then we've got engine jet, external jet pipes here, which look very nicely done. And you've got your landing gear legs, main legs this is, left and right. Yeah, it's a nice sprue that. Um, just a shame about this engine thing. You can see daylight through it when you hold it. You can just about make out here. You can make out daylight through there, but here there's just one or two chinks that are just coming through and the rest is all filled in. So it's a little bit of a tolerance issue there with their, their moulding, I think. But we won't let that put us off too much because it's, overall it's a nice sprue. And now the second one, we've got <coughs> some quite interesting parts here. We've got uh, the underside uh, where your Gatling cannon is, 65 rounds a minute, and here are the rounds themselves. You can see here, you can paint these up, you can have some great fun with this. 
Uh, you have some fun painting those, I'm sure. And then you've got your tub here. This is the titanium tub here and here for the actual cockpit for the pilot and his whizzo to sit in. Here's your main front nose leg. And then we've got <coughs> the wheel, nose wheel. And or is that the main gear leg wheel? I'm not quite sure actually, it's not that obvious. And then we've got a couple of tanks. We've got an instrument panel here. Now that instrument panel is pretty damned good. Can we get in that closer? Let's just see the detail there. That's almost resin standard, isn't it? A bit too close there. Here we go. That's very nice, isn't it? Beautiful instrument panel, actually, that. 48 scale. Um, and then we've got these, um, <coughs> these are the drop fuel tanks here. Uh, and then various other small parts and bits and bobs. There's your, yeah, that's the nose wheel, which you put the tyre around, of course. Yeah, nice sprue. No flash, no, no, no nonsense. Look at the look at the detail work. This is where the Gatling cannon comes out underneath. Look at these vents. There's lots of uh, gas vents and cooling vents that are depicted. That's very nicely done. Nice shaping. Love it. It's a good looking plane the A10 isn't it? Yeah. There's no messing with this one. <coughs> it's uh, a very much, very justifiably feared aircraft by enemies of the USA, that's for sure. That's one done, one bag. Gosh, now then, fuselage. Wow, mighty as well. It's a big old bus, I'll tell you, for a 48 scale. Ooh, oh, they've done this nicely. Look at this. Wow, that is beautiful. If I get the zoom to work, you can see it too. <laughs> now then, what do we think of this? That is really nicely done. Look at the fine, fine riveting, recessed rivet detail here. Superb. Got pan lines that are so so accurately done. Nice kit this, looking good. Then you've got that nose, you've got the gun sight, look how big the cockpit area is. You see what I was talking about earlier about how graceful the shaping is, much nicer isn't it than the standard A10 because you've got this fairing behind the uh, cockpit canopy which you don't get on the standard aircraft in the same way. And then you've got the front nose, you've got your gun sight and ultimately your exit for your cannon right up front there. This is your refuelling port here. And then we have the vertical stabilizers with the rudders. Again, beautiful, beautiful uh, detail with the recessed panel lines, recessed rivets everywhere. Got your little fairing, aerodynamic fairing there for your control rods for your rudder. And the same on the other side. Let's take a check on this uh, opposite side of the fuselage. Very, very nice. Great detail, look at that. There's one or two like faint sink marks on what's on the other side, but they're not, they're just in the plastic. I don't think they're actually on the surface, so when you get your primer on, they'll disappear, I'm sure. Don't worry about those at all. That's a nice sprue, big one as well. That goes back in its bag, very impressed with that. So far, it's looking like a cracker, I've got to be honest. Apart from those silly instructions, I think it's heading for a high score, but let's not judge it too prematurely. Right, now then. Oops. Come out a bit. We're two of the same, I think. Yeah, two sprues identical here. So we've got our paveway and the various GBUs. Um, these lighter ones that are on this uh, six pallet. Um, pylon, and then you've got your GBU 65, I think it is, and your pylons here. Oh, very nice. 
Those are, those are quite impressive, aren't they? Are these, are these napalm? Uh, some of you might know what this type of bomb is. It's not one I'm very familiar with. It looks like it might be a napalm or some sort of a similar product. Um, yeah, something nasty for sure, but there's, a, there's no flash. Look at the detail on the tips of these bombs, yeah? Detonation tips on the, uh, the front. Very nicely done. Some great detail here. Quite impressed with this. I think Hobby Boss makes some nice plastic actually. They might be a bit, a bit underrated at times, Hobby Boss. Look at the Rafale. People always say the Rafale is better in the uh, Ravel iteration, Ravel C. I quite like the, um, I'm me yet, yeah, granted, but I did quite like the Hobby Boss one, which I've got a copy of. The only other Hobby Boss that I've actually had. Two more bags to go. I say, this is looking very promising overall. More impressed with this than I imagined I would be. I knew it was going to be good, but very good, the way it's looking. Now, is this a twin again? I think we have another twin. Yes, it's two the same here. Yeah. Yes, identical. So we'll only take one out. That's a bit pointless of one, isn't it? There we go. If I can get one in, that is. <laughs> there we go. Right now then. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are, is it Maverick? Not Maverick, is it? I can't remember the name of some of these weapons, you have to forgive me, but um, I'm sure some of you... It does look like Maverick though, doesn't it? It's a very similar looking uh, guided laser, um, laser or GPS guided weapon. Yes, beautifully done, look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very nice. The parts are so nicely formed as well, there's no flash. We have got a sidewinder that looks like this is slightly warped. Can you see that? It wouldn't be my favourite on this aircraft anyway. I'm not convinced it goes on this aircraft, a sidewinder. I think this is a generic sprue of certain weapons. And I don't think I remember seeing sidewinder in the instruction. I'll have to check that back. And then we've got uh, various countermeasure pods, etc. here. And again, Great detail. Really nicely done. Yeah, that's superb. Nice, nice double sprue there. No complaints there at all. Plenty of weapons. I think that's great that they've included all those, even though it's a two-seater. And then last but not least, we have got this big bag. Let's see if I can clearly get this one open. Took it better than last time. Yes, I did. Right then. <coughs> All looking good so far. Onto the wings then at the end. Right. So we've got uh, upper and lower wings. I'll go with the upper wing first, I think. Bring you in. Now then. Here we go. This looks absolutely brilliant, to be honest. And don't forget, you've got flaps and slats and ailerons all working, positionable as you wish. All sorts of little access panels here. Recess panel lines, recess rivets. A lot of rivets on this aircraft. It's rivet city, to be honest. But it's mainly all recessed. And you've got your nacelle pod for your undercarriage there. And there is the uh, bottom side of it. Then you've got your various flaps and ailerons here and here. And then the other side, same again, opposite wing, port wing this time. You can see here, this is where your, your slats go on the inboard, inboard end of the wing. That's not flash here, by the way. That's some sort of a pivot in system for the flaps, I think, on the uh, leading edge. Doesn't that look nice? That's a really nice sprue. And then last of all, we've got all those other items that we haven't yet seen. So, starting with horizontal stabiliser. And again, beautiful detail. Look at the way they've got those great big pivot points. And the other side, the underside of it is here. Same again with the elevators, huge pivots. Then we've got the wing, this is the lower side of the port wing. So 
some really nice access hatches, lots of recessed uh, rivets and you can see all the hard points there for the pylons to go on and then over on this side same again and then all the various pylons are featured here absolutely fantastic really really good <coughs> well that's really um it's a big old bus isn't it, it's a big bird there, so you get this built, it's going to be huge, humongous, Mahusif! <laughs> yeah, unfortunately I've got, I'm not, don't know where I'm going to put this if I have to build it tomorrow, I will know where to put it, it's massive really. I mean that's bigger than a 30 second scale Spitfire, but sure. Anyway, there we are, so that is uh, the Republic Thunderbolt, well I said Republic. From Republic Thunderbolt, Fairchild, if you will. Uh, this was um, donated, if you will, by Neil, one of our subscribers. Thank you very much, Neil. Really appreciate that. Um, to be honest with you, uh, although it's got rubber tyres, I quite like them. I think they've been very well done. Uh, the only things I don't like, uh, there was a tiny mark on that kind of area. I think it's quite, it's not significant at all. Don't think that's going to give us any real issues. Um, the only thing I didn't like was the just rather confusing instructions, especially in relation to the cockpit. I thought that was a bit that was a bit weird. It was kind of gibberishish, if you know what I mean. Um, and it's a bit confusing the way they lay it out. Um, so I think I think overall I think I think it's nine out of ten, which is a pretty good. I mean I would expect Hobby Boss to get uh, certainly eight, perhaps you'd expect, but nine out of ten is a very good performance. There's a lot of parts there that are very nicely produced, beautifully figured, accurately sharp, beautiful surface details. It's a nice kit, that. It's a really nice kit. I think it retail for about forty pounds, thirty-four, thirty-eight, forty pounds, something like that. That's quite a lot of plastic for your money, really. I think that's excellent value. So yeah, so that's where I'm at. So thanks a lot, Neil, for sending the kit. Nine out of ten. For sure. Hope you'll give me a 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up. Uh, and don't forget, of course, to, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more similar content. And if you are already a subscriber, ding the notification bell and you will get early notification of any upcoming videos. Um, I'm coming up to Christmas now, so um, it's not going to be like last Christmas when I think I had a video, two, two or three vids a day, because I was getting through my Matchbox collection. It's not like that this year. I haven't got quite so much material, so to uh, distract you from your Christmas celebrations with so perhaps we'll just have a quieter one I'll put my feet on and let the camera have a rest and maybe replace the battery in the remote <laughs> anyway thanks very much for watching uh, until next time I uh, hope you uh, stay safe stay well have a great Christmas if we don't see you in the meantime thank you for your time and watching the review and hope to see you again in the very near future thanks a lot and bye for now